This is Selena Yvette, host of Stories from Planet Earth. Thanks for listening to the following show on Public House Media. Hello, my fellow revolutionaries, and welcome to the Leadership Revolution. My name is Audrey Prosper. If this is your first time joining us, we want you to know that our vision is to help others discover clarity, embrace vulnerability, and experience freedom in their relationship with others and with God. I know that you're going to receive a word today that will bless you and the people around you. I want to invite you to be fully present when you're listening and judge later because we actually can't do both at the same time. Now, I'd like to direct your attention to our host, David Prosper. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, my name is David Prosper, and I am the host of The Leadership Show. And I'm also the founder of Shepherd Revolution Leadership Academy, where we develop revolutionary leaders. If this is your first time listening, I want to say welcome to the revolution, my friend. And if you're thinking this is probably not your show because you're not a leader, oh no, this ain't for me. Uh, oh no, mm-mm, not today, Satan. I want to encourage you to think again because leadership is simply influencing someone's thinking and their behavior, and we all do a little bit of that. And to my veteran revolutionaries, thank you for having the courage to continuously turn broken systems upside down. Our world needs more humans like you. Check this out. Because when leaders get better, our families get better, our schools get better, our governments get better, our communities get better, and ultimately our world gets better. Y'all, we are in week four of reinventing yourself yo tell your friends tell your boss tell your teacher this is going down i'm serious it's no games no games it's it's a hundred percent a hundred percent you hear that a hundred percent real stuff and we're gonna keep it going talking about stop being yourself that's today's show stop being yourself last show we talked about the differences of being an owner and having an owner's man, a mindset and having a victim mindset Then we looked at identity through God's view and then compared it to the world's view. And if you haven't listened to the last show, stop this show right now. Stop it. Press pause and then go to the next, the the previous episode and then come back to this one. You will thank me later. Check this out. Reinventing yourself only happens when we're no longer trying so hard. That's the quotes. You guys can't see it so hard to be ourselves, and then what happens on the other side when we're not trying as hard we experience that joy that blissful joy you see we were happy when we were growing and we are happy when we're growing a couple of sundays ago uh, my family and i were having bible study and while my son was talking about one of the topics we were talking about i happened to look at my shoes and i don't know where this idea came from but I looked at my shoes again and I looked at it again and this idea is I remember when my feet were growing when I was a little boy size 5 size 6 size 7 oh my god mama I'm growing (laughs) and my mom was happy for me that her baby boy was growing and I know as a parent now I understand the, the the happiness that she may have felt because I'm growing and the other feeling that she may have felt as well. You know, you're growing. Yes, David. But God dang, boy, I got to buy another pair of shoes. Holy smokes. <laughs> but those moments of growth were so joyful for me. I remember standing up against the wall, measuring myself to see how much I grew. And as grownups, we are programmed to seek a hassle-free, we look for the comfort zone, we cherish security instead of something that would challenge us and make us grow. 
And though we're acting like adults, being serious, life is not about enjoyment. It is about serious business and our 401k and our retirement. We have to retire and we have to have money. It's serious stuff. (laughs) Deep down inside, there is a dog whimpering and aching inside. The dog is pacing back and forth to go outside and run and play. Like, oh, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. I remember talking to my little sister Divine and we were talking about up and the the dog, the alpha dog, he was so serious. And then when he saw a squirrel, little squirrel, squirrel. And that dog inside of us is itching. So in order for us to not hear that dog within a lot of us, and, and I've been guilty just as well as a lot of us, we cover it up with food with drink, with smoking, with posting the best angles of our selfies and binging on Netflix. Sorry, Disney Plus, sorry. Uh, And that dog continues to whimper down in our souls. We might someday know that this dog that is whimpering is the voice of our own spiritual dyslexia. I'll say that again. We might know that someday That this beautiful dog that is whimpering is the voice of our own spiritual dyslexia. It's the God, a.k.a. dog spelt backward. The God within us is calling us to be the light and shine bright because we weren't created to fit in, but we are created to stand out. And that, my friend, is where joy is. That, my friend, is where we stop being ourselves. There is research that supports that the average kindergarten student laughs about 300 times a day and the average adult laughs just about 17 times. Let's pray. Dear Dad, I want to thank you for this opportunity and this gift of speech. Let my words be seeds of inspiration to awaken the places where you want to give your people life to live their best life. I don't know who will be listening and I don't know who's listening right now, but I invite you in this conversation. I pray that the sound of my voice, that they experience health, healing, favor, provision, protection over them, that they have plenty and do not lack. Father, I pray that they may have a receptive heart and an open mind to receive what they're about to hear. In Jesus name, I pray a to the man. Yo, again, stop being yourself. Yo, stop it. Look to your neighbor and say, stop it. Stop it. Being, being yourself. Yourself. You might be saying, this guy's crazy. Stop being yourself. What do you mean? So when we stop being ourselves, we can experience that joy. But the question would be, what's keeping us back from experiencing joy? Here's my thoughts on it. It's our identity insecurity that impacts our ability to respond to opposition maturely and confidently, thus keeping us back from joy. Continue to travel with me as we unpack this a little bit more. Knowing that we are great is a first step. Knowing our identity is phenomenal. It's a great first step. But being spiritually empowered transforms us and allows us to heal. And it must take place to clear away that garbage of our true self so we can thrive on the foundation of being a child of God. This demands a a journey, a journey, a journey, a journey of the sin, not striving or performance. In the last episode, we talked about performance and the world system versus God system. So it stops us from striving and performing. And in our world, we live in a place where we're constantly trying to prove our worth. We're trying to perform our way to help others see us in a different way. But when we stop being ourselves, stop faking it, stop faking the funk, it changes things. This journey of descent demands a hard look at the patterns of our lives, then a courageous willingness to go beneath those patterns to see what garbage is keeping us back from experiencing joy. I just got deep just now because we got to think about that. There is something keeping us back. 
there is something keeping us back from being on ourselves. And I think about this, and this is going to be the most crude, probably illustration that you would probably want to picture right now. But sometimes it has to pierce the imagination. When we don't go down and and look deep within ourselves to see the patterns in our life that are keeping us back, the garbage that is keeping, it's like a clogged toilet. And if I don't know about you right now, having a clogged toilet is the most annoying thing, especially when you got to go to use the bathroom. And I'm not talking about number one. I'm talking about number two, the nasty, you know what I'm saying? The nasty. It is inconvenient because you got to go and then you go to the toilet and then it's clogged up and you're just like, oh man, hopefully this is not the last toilet. And then you, you, you think about your risk. You think about the risk. If I do the number two, what's going to happen? And and how is it going to overflow? But sometimes you might be in survivor mode. It's like, yo, I got to go. I got to drop the kids to the pool house. I got to let it go. Right? In the words of Frozen, let it go. So we have to dive in deep and remove the, the, the garbage that is blocking us. And when we unplug our, or we, we, um, uh, we fix our toilet can't even talk right now when we fix our toilet and it starts working properly we have such a relief we can experience that same thing when we go into the areas of our lives and see what patterns are keeping us back this is keeping us back from experiencing that joy that light and that love and most people here's the saddest part most people want the source of their problems and believe their source of their problems. They believe the source of their problems come from the outside. They hope that the solution is the same. That since the problems are happening outside, then the solution should happen outside. But the most important work that sets us free to live the life based on our identity is in Christ takes place deep in down our souls. Again, going down to those hidden places that are uncomfortable, that are just grotesque. And if I'm real honest and transparent with you, this entire year, especially in the beginning, God is taking me through this journey where I had to unpack all of those wounds that I had in my life. And it was not until my wife brought it back to my attention, say, hey, I'm noticing these patterns in your life. And then uh, one of my good friends giving me a book called Wounded and another book called Identity Matters. Then as I started to read these things, body keep the score. I was like, man, I've been wounded. And I had to ask myself, have I healed from it? And the answer was no. So I had to ask myself another question. What am I doing to heal from this place so I no longer have to operate from this place? And during that season in my life of healing, I told my wife this was the most uncomfortable place. I was easily irritable. I was easily sensitive. I was hurt all the time because I was dealing with the uncomfortableness of the wounds in my life, the broken patterns that were that were keeping me back and that was stopping me from being myself like it's stopping you from being yourself. Now, I want to share three, three, three ways you can stop being yourself and experience that joy, that the, the self that the world puts on you, that you have to wear this makeup, wear this dress, wear this suit, wear this tie. Stop being that self. I am so passionate about it. And if you can't hear my passion, you ain't got a soul. <laughs> but three ways you can stop being yourself and experiencing that joy. Number one, you must not run and hide from the darkness of your past. Don't run. Run to it. Doing so only leaves important parts of your story, parts of yourself locked away where hope remains unborn. Think about it. I remember when I used to run track and the sun would, was, was out. And every time I would run, I would look to my side and I would see my shadow, the darkness, the dark side of me. And as fast as I could run, the shadow was always there. And then when I think about it, in our lives every single day, especially as leaders... We try to run away from our past. We try to run away from dealing with the things that hurt us, the things that are keeping us back. But oftentimes, our darkest past comes on our sunniest days. 
I'll say that again. Our darkest past comes on our sunniest days. So don't run away from it. Run to it. And fear is only false evidence appearing real. So when we deal with the patterns, the uncomfortable, the wounds, the voids, the hurts, the habits, the hangups, we can experience that joy and we are not looking no longer for the approval or the um, uh, praise of, of the people around us because we know who we are and we're no longer seeking those things in unhealthy places. Number two. You must go down deep, 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 deep into your own brokenness if you want hope to walk in freedom and joy. I remember in Sunday school, my mother, you would always lead this and she would always sing, deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide, deep and wide, wide and deep. Wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. So there's a fountain flowing wide and deep, like my mother would always say. And the question we have to ask ourselves, what's the water? Is it pH water of 9.6? Or is it Detroit water, where it's just horrible? And we have to decide if we're going to go down deep down to our own brokenness and that is the only way we can ever walk in freedom and joy and stop being ourselves stop being the self that the world has created for us and until then we are constantly walking around faking it and i hear this concept all the time fake it till you make it no i completely disagree with that passionately don't fake it till you make it be real And be professional, be authentic. You don't have to fake it. If something doesn't sit right with you, you can honor those feelings in a healthy way. Hey, I'm upset right now. I need to cool off. And then find healthy outlets to deal with whatever you have to deal with. Not suppress those things. And then what happens when we constantly suppress all of those negative experiences, those negative feelings, those negative emotions, what happens, something or someone comes and becomes that catalyst that triggers us. And now we explode. And what happens is we tend to say, sorry, this is usually not me. This is not my best side. But what happens is we show the world what was buried deep inside but when we're constantly consistently reflecting we won't be reacting we will be responding and then there's a difference between reacting and responding if we think about it right first responders when we think about the fire department the police when we think about all the the uh, the first responders when we call 911 Typically, they're asking questions, right? Think about that. We have an emergency. We need them to come right now. But they're asking us questions. Who's with you right now? Are you hurt? Where are you located? Stay on the phone with me. What's going on? Is that person alive? Who's else around? What's your your phone number? They're asking these questions to get a better understanding of the situation. So as they respond to the situation and not react to the situation, now they can think clearly, they can think creatively, and they're focused. But when we're reacting, we're thinking in our survival brain, and we're just constantly reacting, 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 and we don't think of the consequences. So when we reflect and when we go deep down inside and see our own brokenness, it allows us to respond. And now we're thinking with our frontal lobe where we can reason versus our limbic system where we're just responding in survival mode, fight, flight, or freeze. Number three, this is not a one-time journey. I remember talking to a friend. (sighs) Healing does not just happen overnight. Healing does not happen in a year. And when we get healed from a place, there's a other, there's a new place that needs to get healed. And we're not going to just, it's not going to be a one and done thing. Oh, I'm healed. I'm healed. Look at me. I'm healed. No, we're going to revisit these stages again, again, and again. Not the same issues, 
but the same stages because we're constantly, we're forever on a healing journey. Again, three ways you can stop being yourself, the self that the world puts on you. Don't run from it. Don't hide from your past. Deal with it. Run to it. Number two, you got to go down. You got to go deep and wide, deep and wide to your own brokenness so you can walk in that freedom, my brother, my sister. And number three, this is not a one time journey. You're going to have to revisit these stages again, again, again. Not the same issues, but the same stages. Again, y'all, I am so grateful that you tuned in today's episode. I, I pray and I hope that it was fruitful to you. Hopefully it was an encouragement to say, hey, I'm created to uh, stand out, not fit in. And I don't want to leave you hanging, my friend. So here's the hashtag David's Leadership Challenge. Everybody say hashtag David Leadership Challenge. Hashtag David Leadership Challenge. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. I need you to get a pen. I need you to get a paper. And I need you to do a self-discovery of what's holding you back from experiencing joy. What's holding you back from stopping and being who you truly are, being yourself, being who God created you. Write that down. And when you're done, and if you feel comfortable, I want you to text me. Text me directly at leader shift to 345345. Tell me your answer. I want to connect with you. I want to pray with you, pray for you. And I want to hear your thoughts. Again, text the word leader shift to 345345. Let's close in prayer. Dear Daddy, I want to thank you for what we got to hear today. Let it penetrate our hearts and our mind. Let it bless those who have listened. Let it inspire them. Let them have the courage, Father. To go deep and wide and stop being the self that the world portrays and start being the self that you've created them to be, created them to stand out and not fit in. I pray the Lord blesses you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he be gracious towards you. May he give you strength when you are weak, hope when you are discouraged, faith to believe, and joy that is contagious. In Jesus' name mighty name a to the man y'all thank you again for listening i really appreciate i i really 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 appreciate it and i used to have this crazy idea that i wanted to change the world to 7.5 billion people but now my purpose is only to positively change one person I want to welcome you back every other Wednesday of each month for a new episode. Yo, again, I tell you, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your grandpa, tell your boss, tell your teacher, tell all your friends. It's going down. I'm saying it's going down all the way down. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And text the word leadership to 345345. Leadership, S-H-I-F-T, not the other way. If you thought about it, you got to clean your mind. Mm -mm, It's nasty. Mm -mm, Not today, Satan. (laughs) Leader shift to 345, 345. And let's connect. Let's be friends. I want to be friends with you. I need more friends. Friends are great. I love friends. And I want you to remember something. If we as leaders are to set ourselves apart, we must start by leading through love, which always comes from the heart. Thank you for listening today. We hope you are blessed. To share your leadership experience, you can text us directly at 414-552-9598. Again, 414-552-9598. And don't forget to subscribe to enjoy more messages just like this one. On behalf of Shepherd Revolution, we look forward to connecting with you every other Wednesday. Now go and revolutionize the way you lead.